Hello, good afternoon. Now we have the last section, the third one, but uh, one very interesting also. We are going to speak about the who, the how, and the what of global production. We have here uh, Francisco Guillén, Deputy Director General of National Accounts uh, at the National Institute of Statistics and Geography from Mexico. We have also Dylan Dressier, he spoke some minutes ago. He's head research for national accounts in the US Bureau of Economic Analysis. And also we have with us at Penny Bamber. Penny is a senior researcher at Duke University Center of Globalization, Governance and Competitiveness. We will begin with Francisco. Please, you have 20 minutes for you. Thank you so much. Well, first, let me say that in the case of Mexico, uh, one of the most in important thing is, first, we have 128 million. This is our population. It's a little country. Second one, we have a very big relationship with different countries, like the United States, Almost 85% are our export, exports. Uh, well, the most shared is, or our trade is 80% with the United States. And that means uh, some kind of opportunities to go inside of uh, the view of the globalization. How, how is uh, the opportunities that we have to make uh, some trade with other countries. It's a challenge, but in that way, of course, we are trying to get some tools. Those tools, one, is one, the extended supply and use table, and the other one is the value added of global manufacturing. Uh, global manufacturing exports. And that means a kind of trading value added for uh, the global production, for the manufacturing. Uh, we have there the goods for processing. And of course, uh, what is the main benefit? Well, I told you that uh, some a specific points is uh, to get a new generation of information. It's very easy to say, but at the same time, it's very difficult to get. And this is the main task that we are doing with this project. On the other hand, well, we always ask to the users, uh, why can't they do with our tools or with this information? And is, this is one of the most, most important things because we have to react to the usefulness of this information. And the benefits, well, for instance, we provide information for a specific analysis uh, in the view of satellite accounts for uh, some specific thematics. And on the other hand, we uh, generate instruments instruments for the global value change. And of course, this information for different ministries is important to take decisions. <coughs> In the case of the supply, extended and supply and use table, we took the OECD terms. And that means that we have to spread our supply and use table in different ways. One is in relation with the uh, economic activity that we are working with more than 222 activities. We don't publish that at that level because when we are speaking for the size of class, small, medium, and large, uh, we spread the supply and use table. In some cases, we have only one enterprise specific on the large side and 
That means that we have to cover the confidentiality in Mexico. So we have to close at, at if I remember well, for, for about 24 or 25 uh, big sectors. On the other hand, well, the terms of reference ask for the ownership focus and of and the most important thing is to look the uh, export focus, exported and non-exported. But in the case of Mexico, in the case of Mexico, sorry, in the case of Mexico, we have another sector that is very important. We spread the supply and use tables in the same way that the OECD terms. But one is the formal and the informal sector. And the figure for the informal sector is because uh, if I saw the informal sector, 25% of our value added means the contribution of this sector. And this sector, well, has 52% of our employment. You could see which is the main thing and which are our problems there. So for this, we have to look what happened in the case of the informal sector to get another things, not only to see the exports uh, and the non-export activities. It's important to know which is the relationship between the exporters and non-exporters and the role of the informal sector in Mexico. On the other hand, well, this is the criteria that we use to classify uh, the exporter and non-exported. Of course, our specific unit is the establishment. This is the main uh, unit of observation that we use for spread these uh, supply and use tables. And in this case, for the exporter, we are looking for those establishments that uh, has transactions of goods and, and or services uh, abroad of the of of Mexico. Uh -huh. On one hand, on the other hand, is the non-exported. So those establishments that has not uh, very big uh, 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 exports to any country. And the important thing is here, well, when we are talking for the non-exported uh, breakdown type of production, well, what means the informal sector? We use the idea of those establishments that don't have uh, specific accounting records, don't give some social benefits for the workers, and, of course, uh, they avoid the federal taxpayer or the tax, the taxes that they have to pay. Well, this criteria give us, in, uh, if I see uh, something that make comparable between other countries, big difference probably. But at the same time, I am looking for a specific Mexican photography. On the other hand, well, it's important to know which is the foreign affiliates. In this case, I am, or we are talking, uh, in those foreign affiliates that, is, uh, that has a very big relation with uh, institutional uh, residents in, in my country. That means there are Mexican establishments that are working outside of Mexico. On, on the other hand, we have the economic unit that, res, uh, that has a, that economic use, unit residing in my country, uh -huh, but depends on institutional unit that is not resident in the country. It's the case, for example, of, uh, in the automotive industry, the Ford company. Uh, uh, 
uh, the matrix is in the United States, but we have the affiliates in Mexico to produce some automotives. On the other, on the other view, well, uh, we have to cross different, different sources to get the information. One is in relation uh, uh, with the economic census that give us some idea of about 42,500 economic units that we could cross with the trade administrative registers. And that gives us a view about what happened with exporter and unexported activities. Of course, at the same time, this information give us some specific charts to spread uh, what kind of uh, uh, ownership uh, we have around the enterprises that we are looking here. One is if they, what, ha one, if they have 50% or more percentage of the uh, foreign capital, that means that those industries depend uh, on the foreign decisions and that gives us the opportunity to look if they ask and depends on some specific matrix, I mean enterprise from abroad. Uh, of course, we ha have to classify them like foreign-owned affiliate. On the other hand, this is a foreign-owned uh, that are uh, enterprises, Mexican enterprises, that has a control of other industries uh, uh, in other countries. And of course, the other uh, criteria is to look the domestic owned and the domestic owned affiliate. And that means those establishments that has less than 50% of percentage in relation with the capital in the social, the, the, in the, in the social capital. On the other hand, <coughs> the other criteria is how to look small, medium and large. And probably it's another challenge because if I want to compare with other countries, probably this criteria could be different. And we have to ask something. This instrument is to look uh, one country to the rest of the world or to other countries. So we have to discuss a lot about this kind of criteria because in the case of Mexico, we, are, uh, we, are, we have around 4.2 million of establishments that we have to classify, classify in small, medium and large. And you could see in this slide, in the case of the small en enterprises, we are talking about or around of, of 4.2 million of small establishments. Uh, we have another problem, the agricultural sector. In the agricultural sector, we have to, to speak with some ex experts, and in that case, uh, we have to look not only the occupation, we have to look the hectares for crops and cattle hits, hits to classify in small, medium and large. In the case of cattle hits, uh, the, 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 uh, in the farmers we look those that has less than 10 hits in one hand, on, and on the other hand, uh, is about five hectares for crops to classify, to classify like, like small. And then we did a comparison between, uh, for the other, the medium and large, uh, between this information and uh, the employment that they have. And then, well, this is a kind of uh, 
of uh, our supply table that we spread uh, the exporters, the, the non-exported, the formal non-exported, and the informal non-exported. Uh, by activity, mm -hmm. and of course we are looking the relation between these four types of level export uh, industries, and of course we have to look how they uh, complement the uh, whole activities. On the other hand, uh, these are some results from this views. Uh, for instance, the export focus gives for the exported, you could see the red ones. In the case of mining, and this very logic for us, we have 42.2 exported uh, units, uh, 42 of the total production that we exported by the units, and here you could see uh, the most important industry, uh, the petroleum, that we have a lot of exports of oil uh, in, in Mexico. On the other hand, we have the manufacturing sector for the exporters. In this case, we are talking for about 62.6, uh, but almost all of these, ex of these exports means goods for processing. So, uh, this is a kind of charge that we could use, and of course, for the users, it's very important to know how to look this information. On the other hand, we have the Wall Street trade uh, that, uh, and the retail trade that we have 59 and 34.5% in relation with the in uh, international trade. Well, on the other hand, we have the uh, uh, formal non-exported, but I would like to say something about, that is the green one, the uh, informal non-exported. That is the other part of our economy that has a very big relation in construction, in retail trade, uh, and of course in transportation, but you could see other services. Personal services is, are there, and that means that we, are, we have a lot, a lot of uh, challenge to introduce different topics, and that means that, uh, for instance, this chair could be growth when we are talking about the, uh, uh, the digitalization, for example, especially for transport sectors and these kind of services. Well, on the other, we have uh, a, domestic, a domestic ownership that is uh, the red one in the case of the agriculture almost all of our production is owned by Mexicans, so that represents almost, not almost, 100 percent. But in the case of, of, in the case of mining and electric, electric power generation, there you could find Pemex, our oil uh, enterprise, and this is, a, a, we call in the case of electric power, we have uh, the public electric enterprise in Mexico. So that means teachers. But in the case of manufacturing, we have the uh, domestic, uh, for instance, we could say the domestic owner that is only 22.6, the green one is in relation with the domestic owner affiliate, that means Mexicans uh, industries that has more than 51 uh, social capital in control 
in these industries. The blue one is the foreign owner. <coughs> that means uh, uh, those industries that uh, has residents in Mexico but control in Mexico uh, other industries in other countries. Uh, and the 33.2 rep represent the foreign own affiliates. That means a very big share when we are looking industries like automotive in the case of Mexico. That depends on other industries from other countries, controlled by other countries. Uh, in the case of World State Trade, it's almost the same percentage. And for the professional, scientific, and service activities, uh, that means around 25% in that, in that uh, foreign owned affiliated. On the, uh, on the other hand, when we are looking not only the supply and use, extended and supply use table, we, our first exercise was uh, to look the value added of global manufacturing exports. And the idea of this is how Mexico ha is part of this global production. Well, this is one idea of the fragmentation of production is the iPhone. Example, I cannot say more because probably you know more than me <laughs> in this in this thing because uh, it's the, the classic example to look this kind of fragmentation. But the idea is to, to look which is the contribution by each country in the context of value added on each part of the production of one iPhone. And how to put inside of the, this uh, fragmentation production, how to put inside of each, of each country the value added. On the other, uh, well, I didn't say that in this case, that, uh, and of course, in the extended and supply and use table, we use uh, the SNA 2008 as a framework. Uh -huh. But at the same time, we, are look, we, we work with the, uh, 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 North America, uh, North American Industrial Classification System, if I said well. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, in the cases and in the specific case of value added of manufacturing export, we use uh, the new guide of uh, the measure on global production, and of, of course, the terms of reference of the OCD in different projects like the extended and supply and use tables. Some criteria is in relation with, because we have to classify again, which of the, those manufacturing industries are part of the global production. And in that case, we have two or three criteria. One is uh, the, in the case of the companies who has mainly inputs coming from abroad, and of course, we are talking about that concept of goods for processing that give us an idea about two thirds as a minimum proportion uh, of the export and the inputs. The other is in relation with, the, with, with companies that uh, in specific is controlled by foreign parties parent companies, and that is another criteria, because if they depends, depends on the foreign uh, 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 enterprises, well, of course, they have to look uh, the interest not only in the uh, Mexican market, they have to look uh, the interest of the markets that they are working uh, 
uh, with some mandate of this uh, non-resident uh, non enterprises, but they control them in Mexico. And on the other hand, well, this is very complex, but the idea is we have four or five million establishments that we have to look inside of them to make a specific criteria, and you could see the gray part, and that is from the whole uh, manufacture. manufacturing industries is the part that we consider that are part of the global manufacturing uh, 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 industries. And uh, the main thing here is, or the message that I would like to say is that we link uh, different instruments. Tax reported, of course, trade uh, for, for, for in one hand, the trade administrative registers, the economic census, and the manufacturing service. And that gives us the opportunity to know about what happened with the, we call the value added of uh, the, the, the value added of export of manufacturing, of the global manufacturing, and we could obtain the relationship between the balance of payments. This is our part of uh, or some indicators uh -huh, that we can obtain. Uh, you could have this presentation anyway. I don't speak so much of this, but again, we use the supply and use tables to obtain this. The last data is in relation that for instance, the value of the domestic intermediate consumption in relation with those uh, uh, global manufacturing uh, enterprises increase when increase very high when they depend on the external trade. Thank you so much. Thank you, Francis.